Hi everybody, it's James Mahoney here of Black Lobster Academy. Welcome to part 9 of my introduction to Adobe Photoshop for illustrators and artists. In the last episode we covered image adjustments and filters. We covered pretty deeply how to gain total control of the tonal values of an image with the Curves tool. We also covered color adjustments using hue saturation and the color balance tools, adjustment layers, and various filters like blur and sharpen. In this episode we're going to cover the main points of working with text in Photoshop. Let's go. Creating text. You add text to a Photoshop document using the text tool from the toolbox. Or even faster, press the letter T. This changes your cursor to the text edit I-beam cursor seen here. You then drag out a rectangle roughly in the place where you would like your text to go. Whenever you see this box active, you are in text edit mode. Just type to enter your text. Text appears wherever the text entry cursor is just like with any text editor. In text edit mode, the UI does behave somewhat differently though. This is because all text entered now will be interpreted as text entry and not as commands to the Photoshop interface. So typing the letter V now, for instance, will naturally not switch your tool to the move tool as usual, but instead will enter a V into the text box. It's no surprise, but trust me, you're going to do it sometimes when you're moving quickly. Just like most text editing, you can select text inside the box by clicking and dragging over the text. When selected, the text is in this weird negative form so you can see it over any background. You can click anywhere inside the text and delete and add text, just as you would assume. You can click and drag on the text entry box handles pretty much as you'd expect to. The text will then conform to fit into the box. But if the letters can't fit in the box, they won't be shown. Click just outside the box corners to rotate when you see the cursor change to the rotation indicator. Click and drag outside the box to move the text around. Hitting Escape will cancel the text entry operation. As usual, along the top you have your options bar. And notice also that now you have a new layer in the Layers panel. It has a big T on it, and it's a special layer, a text layer. In many ways, it's just like the other layers. You can show it or hide it, adjust its opacity, move it around, change its blend mode, add a mask, and even apply a layer style to it. Both right-click menus come up the same way, all the normal stuff we've covered in Episode 5. If you skipped that one, I suggest you check it out. Layers are super important to Photoshop. So what's special about a text layer? Mainly, it's not a bitmap or pixel layer. You can't use any painting type tools on it directly, or apply bitmap type adjustments or filters. It's a lot like a shape layer, actually. There is one other thing to note, though. With a standard pixel layer, if you double-click the layer thumbnail, you get the layer style interface. With a shape layer, you get the color picker to change the shape's color. But with the text layer, it will select all the text on the layer. This is most useful, and you will use it all the time. Oh, deselecting can be confusing because you can't use Escape or Enter like other UIs. You need to click somewhere else. I'm in the habit of just clicking on the layer itself as it's always available and I don't have to worry about hitting something by mistake. So double click the layer thumbnail to select all the text and click on the layer name to deselect it. Since you can't hit enter like you would expect, deselecting also is how you accept text entry edits. You just deselect it to accept the changes. If the text tool is active and you click on any text on the canvas, it will bring up the text edit box for that text, and you can select or edit the text. Right click on the layer to bring up this menu to find the things you're probably looking for. The top of this menu, or the thumbnail menu, either one, has a menu item for blending options. Choose this to set a layer style. This menu also has these options which allow you to convert the layer type. Rasterize type will convert the type to pixels. Use this if you need to apply filters and such. Or, convert to shape. 
Use shapes if you want to edit the letter shapes as paths. But once you do this, you cannot edit the text as text anymore. So you can't easily fix your spelling errors or anything like that. To learn more about shapes and paths, you can watch episode 7 of this series. Text isn't showing up. Okay, let me digress for a minute because this is so common. A lot of times you will not see the text you're typing because either the text is way too big or way too small. I suggest you just type in the text you want to create and then adjust the text point size here until you see it. You can change the size here with the drop down or by clicking and dragging on the box label here. This will set the size of the text that is selected or if nothing is selected then it will be set for the text you are about to type. To change existing text, like maybe some text you typed but can't see yet, you need to select it first. How do you select it if you can't even see it? You can either double click the text layer thumbnail as I mentioned already or hit Command A to select all. Then adjust the size until it shows up in the box. Text properties. So just for fun, let's put a layer style on this text. What used to be called a typeface is now, since the 1980s, called a font. You can select the font you want. <laughs> the font you want. You can select the font you want from the options bar. But here's a cool thing that if you're new to Photoshop you might not know about. If your text is selected and you change the font, you end up seeing the font with the inversion and it's hard to make artistic judgments. But if you select the text layer and don't have the text selected, then you can click on the font style drop down box and use the arrow keys to switch between fonts. Once you've hit the arrow key, you can type a letter and it will jump to that part of the alphabet. Use this to quickly try out different fonts in context. You can do the same thing for some other text properties that have drop down boxes for input like font size. Some font families have different weights associated with them. If they exist for the selected font, then you can access them with the, this drop down list here. Sometimes there's bold, thin, oblique, etc. You can click on this color swatch to change the color. Again, you can use this drop down to change the font size or just slide on the label here. You can set the justification using these switches. It's all pretty standard stuff. But if you want to do anything else, you'll need to open up the character and paragraph windows. You can find these here or open them from the Windows menu up here. In these panels you can change the text in pretty much any way you can think of. I'm going to show you only the stuff that artists and illustrators tend to use, as opposed to what typographers and layout artists might get into. The font, weight, point size, and color all work the same here as in the options bar. But here you have a few other things you can do as well. This will make the characters taller or shorter, This will make them fatter or thinner. And this will make them spread apart. These are all useful things. You can reset the character from the menu found with this button. That's exactly where you'd expect to find that, right? If you have a lot of text, then these paragraph settings will let you change the justification and indentation and whatever similar to what you're probably familiar with already from word processing. Text transformations. You can transform text just like everything else using the free transformation tool. Use Command T to bring this up. This was covered more in Episode 6. You have two choices when it comes to warping text. If you hit this button from the options bar, you get this pop-up. You can select a warp and then change it with sliders. But I generally prefer this other approach. You can access the Warp tool from the Edit menu. This will give you an interactive adjustment tool for the same set of warps. The custom warp tool I love so much 
doesn't seem to work with text for some reason. If you need that kind of warp, I suggest you transform the text to a shape layer. You do that by right-clicking on the layer to bring up this menu. And as I showed you earlier, you have access to these menu items. Click on this one to convert the text to a shape layer. Make sure you have the text typed in the way you want because you can't go back from here and re-edit the text. But if your text is all set to go, now as a shape, you can do all the cool shape stuff I showed you in episode 7. Now you can also use the custom warp tool to do whatever kind of warp you want. Or you can grab path anchors and create new letter forms. Or maybe use the character as just the beginning of a decorative pattern. Something like this. You can make a tattoo out of this one with a little bit of work. And that's about it. In this episode, we covered the basics of working with text, creating and editing text, using layer styles, setting text properties, warping text, and making new letter forms by converting text to a shape layer. And that wraps up this introductory series on Photoshop for artists and illustrators. Now that you have an idea what the main features of Photoshop are and basically how they work, consider taking my digital illustration course offered at blacklobsteracademy.com. In that course, I'll take you much deeper into how to use these powerful Photoshop tools together in concert to make your own stunning portfolio of original artwork. If you watched the whole series and got something out of it, you can help me out by spreading the word and telling your friends. Also, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the series. You can leave a message here on YouTube or reach me on Facebook at um, Black Lobster Academy. Thanks for watching, and thanks for any likes, subscribes, comments, or shares. Yeah.